Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so tiny and little. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's Jenny J 1911 at a viewer's request. I am doing a video on the star BM chambered in nine millimeter. Now here's, what's really cool about this. I'm not just going to shoot the star BM. I'm going to be shooting a whole family of stars. I've got not two, not three, not four. I've got five stars to shoot tonight. So I'm going to get my ears and my eyes on here and I'm going to take a few shots and, uh, you know, bear with me in case this does not cycle correctly, just because, like I said, they're older guns. You never know. Um, one little quirk about this I did notice already is that you have to push the mag release button in order for the magazine to go all the way in. So make sure it's in. All right. And let's shoot. nice <laughs> my subscribers know me well they knew I would love this so it's awesome all right there we there's our first one that doesn't want to cycle all the way we're gonna clear that out and we've only got one round left. Might as well take that last round. Put that through my target. And there we go. <laughs> All right. So my target looks pretty good so far. I really enjoyed shooting that. I'm going to go grab the next star. All right. Ta-da. <laughs> Here we are with our second. This is the Star B chambered in 9mm. And um, I'm going to shoot a few rounds through this. I do want to say that the ammo that I brought with me tonight to the range, my 9mm ammo, is my own reloads. They're actually really uh, light. I'm going to shoot at a different star. Uh, this one, so I have a star target. And in case, you know, um, I'm going to shoot at the upper left star for this and let's see what happens i haven't shot any rounds through this one yet so we'll see oh see there we go we gotta get that one okay let's check what's going on here nothing chambered so we'll try it again okay okay maybe i just didn't let go fast enough. All right, here we go. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we got a little stove pipe here. Okay, get that cleaned out. And again, <laughs> poor, poor guy. He just is like, probably, you know, he just wants to be a single shotgun. <laughs> no, no stovepipe that time. All right, that's good. Nope. I don't think we're at, no, we're not empty, but all right. Well, we're going to call it a day on this <laughs> Okay, the next member of the star family is the Star Super B 9mm Largo. Now, 9mm Largo is a different caliber 
So if you cannot find nine millimeter Largo ammunition to shoot, you can also shoot 38 Super from this. So I'm only gonna shoot four rounds from this. Um, you know, I'm not really trying to put these guns through their paces. Like I said before, these are older guns. So, you know, we're just shooting a few rounds just to kind of have fun and see what each of them feels like and looks like. Wow, that was right in the center of my target. <laughs> Couldn't have been any more dead on. Nope, oh, I've got one that doesn't want to go. Didn't want to chamber, so let's see what happens here. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay, the penultimate member of the star family that we're shooting tonight is the Firestar in 45 ACP. So this is actually a compact gun and um, the magazine only holds six rounds. So let's, oh, sorry, I got an empty magazine in it. We'll take that one out and put one that actually has ammo in. <laughs> okay. Apparently I have to push the mag release to get that to go in. Okay. Let's see how this one does. I'm gonna go for that star up there. Woo! <laughs> See what we got going on here. Yeah, okay. Just didn't want to. Just didn't want to chamber that one. So there we go. This is really grippy. The texture on this one. Wow. I think I've got one more took my finger off thinking that was the last round and then I was like no I think there's one more and there was okay and our last gun for the star family is the star b in 380 so <laughs> I'm actually really excited to shoot this one because you won't believe this but I've never shot a 380 before so I'm super excited to give this one a try um all right and since this is the tiniest one that I'm shooting. I'm going to shoot the tiniest star on my target sheet. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so tiny and little. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Wow. <laughs> All right, I know I've I've never said anything like I've always been like, yeah, I'm not gonna shoot a 380, but you know what? That's a fun little mini gun to shoot. So it's really not much different than shooting a 22. So let's head back to the bench and we'll talk about this and we'll wrap the whole star family up. <laughs> Okay, we are back from the range. I got to shoot five fairly different um, older guns. Th thanks to my friend Les, by the way, for loaning these to me. So as I had said earlier, um, I actually had one of my subscribers suggest one of these Star Model B guns. And so um, my friend Les kind of took it from there and he said, well, we could do a whole family of star guns. So that's what we did. So that's why we were able to get our hands on five star guns. So I really love history. You all know that. And I wanted to give you a little bit of history about the company that came up with the star guns. So you see them all laying out here in front of me. Um, you can see that they look very similar, but they all have their differences. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. 
But first I wanna tell you about the company. So Star was based out of Ibar, and Ibar is a city in the Gipuzkoa pro province of Spain, okay? So these are Spanish guns. They came from Spain. Ibar was the center of the weapons development for, for hundreds of years, actually. And it was known for its Spanish steel. And Spanish steel is known for being very quality, very high quality, very durable. Um, it would hold its edge in battle. And so since guns were, you know, required a lot of the same skills as making other weapons made of, the, made of this Spanish st steel, um, they decided, well, it seems like a natural progression to start making firearms because that Spanish steel used the steel with wood accessories. And guess what? These guns steel with wood accessories. So it just seemed like a natural progression for them. It was the epicenter there in Ibar to have the guns made there. So in 1919, the Bonifacio company registered the Star Trade name. And I want to tell you that even though that happened in 1919, the guns in this video uh, didn't start getting produced until about 1924. So, um, Sadly, in 1997, Star kind of met with some financial ruin. They ended up declaring what was the equivalent to Chapter 7 bankruptcy, and they had to close their doors. So all of the unassembled guns, all of the um, unassembled parts and unsold barrels, all of that stuff by government order had to be destroyed. But not to be kept down, Star ended up combining with another company called Astra, and they came up with a, co a company called A-Star, and A-Star began making firearms again. So that was what happened after these guns were manufactured by the Star company. Star became A-Star when they combined with Astra. So let's talk a little bit about each of the individual guns that you got to see me shoot. The first gun, and this was the gun that was requested specifically by one of my subscribers, is called the Star BM in nine millimeter, okay? This gun is a compact version of the Model B that you're gonna see here in a minute. Unlike the Super Model B, it did not have a linkless barrel. It does, however, have a steel frame. So even though this thing is small and compact, it is weighty. And I absolutely love the finish on this. It has aged so beautifully. And to me, well, when I first saw it, when I first laid my eyes on this, I actually thought that it was case hardened. Um, it's not, but it's gorgeous. I mean, just the patina on this is just so beautiful. And I will say these are aftermarket grips, but um, Les did a really nice job of fitting grips on this that look beautiful. So I just, this gun was so much fun to shoot. Um, I really, really loved it. And I'm so thankful for my subscriber that suggested this. So I'm gonna put this one down. Okay. The next one is the Model B Super, okay? All right, so we're clear. Now, this was made sometime between 1946 and 1983. It does have a full-length guide rod with a captive spring. It also has a quick takedown lever. And the extractor, this is super cool, the extractor also serves as a loaded chamber indicator. So when that pops out, you know that you have a round in your chamber. So that's really cool. Um, this gun, obviously, you know, this one is bigger. I would say, I don't know, they feel like they weigh about the same. I haven't done any scientific research, but uh, I think because of the composite of this steel, it's just a little bit different than this one. So, but it was, again, really fun to shoot. It's got that nice 1911 feel to it. 
So of course, you know, again, I really loved it. The only difference in all of these is that they do not have that back strap safety. That's the one thing that these guns don't have that, you know, a traditional 1911 does have. All right, I'm gonna put the magazines back in these because I don't wanna get all the magazines mixed up to so many different guns. Okay, the next one is the Star Super B. You'll notice that these look very, very similar. The difference between the two is the caliber. So this Star Super B is a nine millimeter Largo, which I said in my video. So the nine millimeter Largo is not a nine millimeter, okay? but it is very, very close to the 38 Super. So if you don't have nine millimeter Largo to run through this gun, you could use 38 Super. Um, again, you know, just like the other ones, it's got a lot of the same features, which, you know, I'm not gonna take the time to go over because it would be redundant, but it is just a beautiful gun. All of these guns have this like pendulum trigger. They all swing rather than, um, it's not like a 1911 trigger, a straight back trigger. So it's also a really nice, nice old gun. Okay. Now the next one is a little bit different because this is the Firestar. This is not in the Model B family, but it is a star. And you'll see that this is also empty. So this is chambered in 45 ACP. And even though it was um, smaller, you know, you would expect it to be kind of snappy. It's snappy, but it's not as snappy as you would expect. It does have that nice, similar to a 1911 feel. And I have actually read online, a lot of people have said that they use this as their service gun, like law enforcement, um, just because of the size and the weight of it and the caliber. So this has served a lot of people as their service gun. All right, and our last gun, I honestly think the last gun I enjoyed the most, and I'm gonna tell you a little secret. So this is our Star B in 380. <laughs> I just love even racking this thing. Okay, so this Star B in 380, um, I had so much fun shooting this. It was just, it was just so much fun. It was not, too different than shooting a 22 because it was so light and so easy. I barely knew I was even shooting anything. Um, and I just love the size and feel of this in my hand. It's just perfect. And so here's the secret I'm gonna let you in on. I've always been a little bit of a caliber snob. I started out, my very first gun was 45 ACP. And so I thought, yeah, God's caliber, I'm not gonna shoot anything else. And then I tried a nine and I was like, okay, I like nines are good too, 45s and nines are fine, but I'm never gonna shoot a 380. Why would I bother to shoot a 380? It's just a tiny little gun, it's not gonna do anything, but I shoot 22s, right? So I guess I was kind of talking out both sides of my mouth, but um, when I shot this, <laughs> I decided I've got to get a 380. So um, I don't know. I don't know if I could find one of these 380s for sale. If I did, I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. But I just, I love this gun. I loved the feeling of it, the shootability of it. And it's really cool because kind of like a race gun, it actually has this thumb rest right here too on the side, on the grip. So that's pretty neat. But yeah, I just really, really enjoyed shooting this the most. Like it was just, I don't know, something about it. It was just so much fun. So there you have it. There is a whole family of star firearms. Um, I'm so thankful for my subscriber that reached out and made this suggestion. This was a lot of fun to shoot. And you know, I love going back to these older guns. Um, you know, polymer guns have their places, they do their job, but I love these old steel and wood guns. They're just, 
There's nothing else like them. And they're so similar to a 1911. So these were the guns that people who wanted to get into 1911 but couldn't quite afford a, afford a 1911 price may have opted for one of these and they would have been a really great option. So anyway, I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any of the star family members in your family and tell me what calibers you have. Tell me, you know, how you acquired it. Where did it get, where did you get it from? Like, what's its story? Um, all of these guns have their own story, their own history, you know? So that makes it really cool too. And make sure you hit like and subscribe on this video because I would love to keep this channel growing. We have gotten so close to being able to do our 5,000 subscriber giveaway for the Dylan RL 550C reloading press. I would love to be able to draw your name and give this reloading press to you if you are my one lucky subscriber out of the first 5,000. So make sure you pass that along to friends and family and drop a comment below. And I look forward to talking to you all again soon.